big corporation. You're just a person. What what, what do you do given the world? I think you're when you're a young on? person, one of the very important things to do is to rethink the idea that you're going to uh, finance uh, a, a college education on, on loans. Uh, you know, I think it's probably much more important to acquire some real hands-on skills and things. Uh, you know, if you're a person in midlife, you, you, it, there may be a, a time when you have to rethink what you're doing. You know, maybe you're, it's not a good idea to be an executive for a national chain uh, corporation that depends on things like the warehouse on wheels and 12,000 mile supply lines. Maybe you need to make other arrangements. You know, if you have some acquired wealth, Maybe it's not a good idea to keep it in some places and not in other places. Um, uh, you know, I, I do think that uh, a huge opportunity out there uh, is for young people to, to realize uh, the, the opportunities for them in reconstructing local networks of economic interdependency. Uh, uh, in other words, many layered, rich, fine-grained, uh, local economies, the very economies that were deconstructed and destroyed by the chain operations based on Tom Friedman's globalism. There are going to be a lot of opportunities for young people to go into business, to be wholesalers, to be producers of things, to move things around, to be retailers, uh, and uh, you know, I don't think that they're being uh, uh, encouraged to do that. You know, they're encouraged to become masters of the universe and Steve Jobs. And somebody asked me a very interesting question today, by the way. I, I was at the uh, Occupy Wall Street thing, and uh, some cable, some internet network news, young people network, asked, you know, they yeah, recognized yeah. me, they asked me a question. They said, <laughs> what, what, do you think about, they said what do you think about Steve Jobs uh, passing away? And I, and I actually had not thought about it a whole lot. Uh, and I surprised myself by what, what I said was that, um, you know, in fact, the internet and all the devices connected to it have made us hostages to the internet and hostages to our, to, to our devices. You know, email has taken me four or five hours a day to, to go through, and I don't think I'm the only person who has that problem. You know, the one thing the internet didn't do was give us more hours in a day. So, yeah, Steve Jobs was a brilliant marketer, innovator, and, and a corporate leader, but he also has robbed everybody's time away from them in, in their daily life to such a degree that's unprecedented in history. So, you know, so I, I, so I began to, to take a dim view of, of uh, the, the uh, memorialization of, of Steve Jobs, and he might, he might have been a perfectly lovely fellow. Okay. <laughs> Um, you know, your question is slightly Steve modern. Jobs, yes, no. Uh, well, I know I heard you this. It was a very difficult year. Anyway, I know the architects have done all the apples over. Right. But I know I let you Look, there are people gushing about him. Plenty of people gushing yes, about him. Okay, right. We don't have to do that. Focus. I would say um, what I wanted okay. to touch on was the notion of what you can do. The question always bothers me because it's a, it's a kind of like, well, what are ten ways you can go to be? And, you know, that's not going to. I'm not saying it's empowering. I'm asking do the trick. if you are an individual in the face of this. I'm not saying there's a plan, but there's certainly knowing how you think things are going to be. No, no. I, I just wanted to say if what we really have to do is learn better how to act in concert as a, on a community level on a state level and national level, not just in political ways, but even thinking about our landscape. In other words, our landscape does not is not made out of discrete little pieces called lakes and forests and meadows. It's a very integrated, uh, interconnected, interactive, uh, you know, set of ecologies that where the edges blur into each other. So we need to think about how can we think about the landscape in that way. Our cities are also ecologies, uh, relationships, economic social, cultural, uh, friendship, family, and we need to not, I mean, part of what's gone on politically in America is that the right is all about the individual, and it's all about the family unit is the only unit that counts, that if you get up much above your neighborhood level, you're kind of getting communistic on us. And that, I think, is so destructive on every level, political, cultural, economic, when what we need to do is find ways to work together. And it's not all like it has to come from the federal government. Part of what 
I keep arguing the book is like the future is something that a community has to take in its own hands. And one of the, I made an epilogue essentially, that is like these are civic engagement tools we should use that are better than the ones that we tend to use. And um, I forgot your name, but you know, he's got a civic engagement kind of piece of software. You talked about it earlier today. I mean, we have to actually improve these tools because we have to figure out how we're going right. to work together. I mean, Holland is like really good at it because the idea of the North Sea flooding their entire country really focuses the mind. But in a sense, it's time for us to have our Holland okay. moment, you know? Okay. Do we have, uh, I think we're down to uh, 180 seconds? Okay. No, wait. Less. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I would uh, like a reaction. I posit that this seems to be like a debate between whether the world's going to end with a bang or a whimper. And that uh, what you, uh, uh, what JR accuses JK of calling a disaster, he himself calls a tipping point, which is just a matter of semantics. Whether it's a tipping point or what you call a tipping point.